say climate change is approaching, but guess what? Climate change is here. The crisis is near and it's going across the United States. Such places been having big unpredictable monsoons causing flash flooding, displacement of families, trees being knocked into homes and apartment buildings. It's crazy in the United States. But you know what? What's even crazier is what's going on across the world. Now, I have been bringing you the news in regards to the changes in the weather. Now, the first change in the weather that I've mentioned here on Clicked Up TV had to do with the solar flares of today, the solar eruptions, the coronal mass ejections. Now, I have an article here from the Space Weather MSN channel, and it says Space Weather Watchers observed a series of powerful solar flares between Saturday, August 27th, and Monday, August 29th. And if you don't know what solar flares are, go ahead and look at my previous videos that will give you in depth explanation of what a solar flare, what the coronal massive eruption is. We're going to get into what's going on in these recent days because it has been going on for recent months, but things has been getting bigger. The sun has been doing some massive eruptions in the last few days. There has been smaller solar flares been gobbled up by bigger solar flares across the land. People have been keeping their eyes on this subject, on this eventful news in regards to whether we're going to experience any blackouts, whether it's going to cut any communications to our satellites, but let's just get into the story. So, the most powerful solar flare was registered as an M8 class flare and occurred on Monday at 7.07 a.m. This was Monday, August 29th, spaceweather.com reports. The M class flares are typically described as moderate, but they can still cause brief radio blackouts at the poles and minor radiation storms that might endanger astronauts, according to NASA. Now, scientists are ranking these solar flares into five lettered categories, of which M is the fourth strongest. Within each category, higher numbers represent larger outbursts. Now, high solar activity was also observed in the days prior, especially uh, Saturday. Last weekend, the sun ejected an M4 class flare from sunspot AR3088. So we're going to get into the AR sunspots, the AR3085, as well as the AR3088. Now, the glancing blow of this flare could spark a G1 class geomagnetic storm starting on the 28th and stretching into the August 29th, Space Weather reported. But on Sunday, the 28th, the same sunspot unleashed an M6.7 class flare, which caused radio blackouts over much of North America, the site reported. So, uh, before I go into deep into that, let's go over here to another uh, website, the spaceweather.com website, and see if we can find any more detailed news on this geomagnetic storm watch. Now, there has been an update since August 27th. Now, as of August 28th, they said that M4 class solar flare that erupted described uh, previously had hurled a CME into space. Analysts have determined that it will likely hit Earth magnetic field during the late hours of August 28th. Now, the glancing blow could spark a G1 class geomagnetic storm starting on the 28th and stretching into the 29th. 
Now the solar flare and the CME for the second day in a row, the sun was just crackling with M-class solar flares. The strongest today so far was an M4 class flare from a perpendicular sunspot AR3088. The blast sent a towering shock wave through the sun's atmosphere. Now shock waves like that is usually hurling a CME into space. Forecast models suggest that the CME, like I said, will sweep up another CME, a much smaller CME, and become and and will become or form into a cannibal CME. Now that's where another sun flare eats up a much smaller sun flare. Because weeks back, a solar flare did burst from the sun and it was heading into space towards the earth. But then there was a bigger sun burst, a bigger sun flare that shot off the sun. And the bigger the flare, the faster the speed. So this bigger flare, there's actually a graph right here. There's a bigger flare caught up to the little flare and became a more of a humongous flare. But this model shows that CME completely missed the Earth. Now, isn't that good news? That's definitely good news. So you can see the graph, the Earth, you know, the, the way the uh, sunburst or the solar flare uh, was heading towards us, but it wasn't even facing us as they say in previous reports it was in the opposite direction so it completely missed the earth now even a glancing blow of CME can spark a geomagnetic storm so high latitude sky watchers should most likely see an aurora within those dates between the 28th and the 29th now I believe I've seen an article that says uh, someone seen the uh, aurora it was only could be seen at night when the sky is pitch black but it was mentioned somewhere over there in Iceland but the purpose of me telling you these stories here in regards to the solar uh, issue with the Sun the Sun the, the storm flares and the uh, CMEs is to let you know that there's a lot of things going on in nature at one time and it's crazy how it's in relation to the, the sun is definitely a part of heating up the earth the sun was shooting out flares but the earth just dodged a lot of these CMEs it seemed like the sunspot was on track to to hit us but it never reach the earth atmosphere so the AR3088 would never stop exploding over the past four days which had everybody so worried now the strangely magnetized active region produced more than a dozen M class solar flares between the dates of August 26th through August 30th and as you see here there's a graph where you can see the flares how it started off big with an M7, went down to an M5. We had a couple of small M1s, M2s, M2s, shot up to an M6 around August 28th. Then the biggest one was around August 30th, with that M9 that everybody was worried about. But then as the days progressed, it got smaller and smaller. And it was on the opposite side of the earth where we were able to dodge those solar flares. Now, the graph I showed you show each X-ray peak in the graph above produce a corresponding short wave radio blackout on Earth. No part of our planet was untouched. More than half of the explosions also produce a coronal mass ejection. Earth dodged them all, but some radios were affected. Now, only one or maybe two delivered a glancing blow of no consequences. All the rest sailed harmlessly into space. The simple reason why, they say, the AR-3088 was never facing Earth. Most of the explosion occurred while the sunspot was approaching or even rounding the sun's western lamp. So, 
climate change, climate crisis, starting with the coronial mass ejections, the solar flares, the solar storms, heating up the earth, giving the land new energy, water rising, flash floods, rainfall in places you would never expect. Mother Nature, is Mother Nature acting up or is this a cause of man creation? And when I say man creation, I'm talking such thing as oil drilling, industrialization, you know, even overfishing. There's so many things that can affect the earth, such as power plants that burn fossil fuels. Now, there's a whole lot of production, a whole lot of pollution that produce issues on earth that we see today such as waste, deforestation, which is the clearing of woodlands and forests, chopping down trees, drilling for oil, drilling for gas. Now you want to push these electric cars. You know, when I was young, 20, 30 years ago, you know, there were maybe a little bit of chatter, maybe one or two politicians that was making climate change an issue, but no one was listening. Now here in the 2000s, everybody is frantically jumping, trying to find ways of, of what to do. Now there's flash floods. There's people in the United States that has been affected, but the most people that has been affected by the climate change is Pakistan and I want to give you well I want to show you a brief video from the UN chief in regards to the floods that's going on in Pakistan let's listen to what he has to say excellencies dear friends Pakistan is a wash in suffering the Pakistani people are facing a monsoon on steroids the relentless impact of epochal levels of rain and flooding. The climate catastrophe has killed more than 1,000 people with many more injured. Millions are homeless. Schools and health facilities have been destroyed. Livelihoods are shattered. Critical infrastructure wiped out and people's hopes and dreams have washed away. Every province of the country has been affected. In my prior position as High Commissioner for Refugees, I witnessed the enormous giving spirit of the Pakistani people, welcoming and protecting millions of Afghan refugees, and in many cases, sharing their limited resources. It breaks my heart to see these generous people suffering so much. In response to the devastation, the government of Pakistan has released funds, including immediate cash relief. But the scale of needs is rising like the floodwaters and it requires the world's collective and prioritized attention. The United Nations is issuing a flash of peel for 160 million US dollars to support the response led by the government of Pakistan. These funds will provide 5.2 million people with food, water, sanitation, emergency education, protection and health support. Dear friends, South Asia is one of the world's global climate crisis hotspots. People living in these hotspots are 15 times more likely to die from climate impacts. As we continue to see more and more extreme weather events around the world, it is outrageous that climate action is being put on the back burner as global emissions of greenhouse gases are still rising, putting all of us everywhere in growing danger. The government of Pakistan has asked for the international community's help. Let us work together to respond quickly and collaboratively to this colossal crisis. Let us all step up in solidarity and support to the people of Pakistan in their hour of need. Let's stop sleepwalking towards the destruction of our planet by climate change. Today, it is Pakistan. Tomorrow, it could be your country. Thank you. And you heard it, millions affected, millions lost home, and million people are displaced. These are families, these are kids, babies, and infants. 
this could happen to us. We need to wake up here in America and see how we are bringing on the destruction that's creating the climate crisis of today. As you see all across the news, Pakistan floods, desperation as monsoon floods, devastating the people of Pakistan. One third of Pakistan is under flood waters. Pakistan death toll is rising. Over a thousand killed in Pakistan monsoon floods. So this is news, not just for Pakistan, but for everyone around the world. Now at least 1,136 people have been killed since June. And roads, crops, homes, bridges has washed away across the country of Pakistan. This year, record monsoon is comparable to the devastating floods of 2010, the deadliest in Pakistan history, which at that time left more than 2,000 people dead. So like the UN chief said, let's stop sleepwalking towards the destruction of our planet by climate change. And it's time to make a change. So just wanted to go into a few more articles that shed some light in regards to what's going on in the country of Pakistan. Now Sharshada, Pakistan, a third of the country is underwater. More than 1,000 people killed. An estimation of 10 billion damage has been done. They are calling it the monster monsoon in Pakistan, which has swept away lives, homes, crops, and bridges as weeks of historic summer rain fused deadly flash floods. Almost half a million people have been displaced with vast areas cut off from supplies and power. Now, let's put ourselves in their shoes. In the United States, you know, we had such things as Hurricane Katrina, and we all seen how that played out on the news. People were slow to react. So instead of reacting, let's be proactive. Let's not, not wait to the end. Let's not wait till devastation takes place. There are things that we can do to reduce waste, to reduce pollution, to clear storm drains, to make sure our dams and bridges is protected. Because what happens in Pakistan can happen in the United States. More than 33 million people, or one in seven Pakistanians, have been affected by the catastrophic, catastrophe flooding, which has devastated a country already trying to revive a struggling economy. Once again, more than one million homes has been damaged or destroyed and around a half million of those displaced. Now those numbers to me doesn't even add up. If there's one million homes and half a million displaced, I believe there's more than a half a million displaced if there's one million homes, because each home doesn't just carry one person, but could potentially carry a family or multiple families. So let's wake up if we can do something to reach out to Pakistanian, let's do so. But in the United States, it's time to get proactive in regards to reducing pollution, in regards to reducing waste. As you see, Mother Nature, she's gonna take her course. So let Mother Nature do what she do, but we are making things worse by adding on with this pollution. This pollution is creating ice caps melting. It's creating water rising. It's creating the earth getting a little bit more hotter. It's creating all sorts of problems. 
So let's educate ourselves. Let's look into this and see what we can do as a person. Let's see what we can do as a community. Peace. I'm out.